Namaste to all. Yesterday I received a very interesting WhatsApp message in Tamil which spoke about how do you behave in front of an acharya or how to mingle with acharya etc. So I made a video in Tamil yesterday and I found most of the points in that WhatsApp message are Vedic points and it was also mentioned that this these points are advice of Apastamba Rishi. I'm not too sure if it is from Apastamba Rishi but most of the points are matching with the Vedas and I've listened most of the points from my acharya. So I would like to summarize in English this video will definitely help you if you already have an acharya in your life or if you do not have an acharya in the life and in future you may get an acharya this video will definitely support you and we have to understand that acharya is that person who has realized almighty god and who has realized vedas when he attained to samadhi and he preaches about the almighty god and the vedas and ashtanga yoga philosophy to the public without discrimination that person is called as a uh, rishi yogi guru etc and he does not take money or Uh, you know print bill cheats like you know for for one visit you have to pay 100 rupees like that he will not do business of spirituality so he is the real guru and he is the guru whom we have to sort so the first point is never sit with legs pointing towards the acharya and next point is always walk behind your acharya if your acharya is running then always go behind your acharya in the same speed but do not overtake him in front of him but go behind him And the next point is remove your slippers remove your helmets or other uniforms when you want to meet your acharya be humble with a simple clothes for example in the olden days when a king is going to meet an acharya the king will not go in the cloth of the kings that means he will not have this jewels and etc covers kundalam etc and he will go, but he will have a normal clothing like a dhoti kurta or a normal uh, traditional clothing to meet the acharya that is how we have to meet the acharya and uh, do not sit very close to the acharya and also my acharya always advise when you want to do pranam to me when you want to do pranam to any acharya you have to give at least a distance of 6 feet that means you have to do pranam to acharya from 6 feet distance you cannot go towards uh, near to acharya because he is in turiya avastha he is in, he is a samadhist yogi he is, a, he is pure pure person and we are having impurities in our body in our mind etc so we must do pranams by keeping a distance and also we might possess some germs or we might have cold cough fever etc and these should not affect that acharya so that means that is why we have to give distance and then do pranam to acharya and the next point is never do loose talking in front of acharya always be silent in front of acharya always listen from acharya first before talking and talk to acharya only when he ask you to talk or only when he asking you a question you talk to acharya otherwise do not unnecessarily do loose talking or blabber in front of acharya very very important advice extremely vedic advice the next point is you must st- sit straight in front of acharya when you listening uh, knowledge from acharya acharya is sitting in the asan in a, in a in a higher asan you must sit on the floor and then you must sit your with your shoulders straight your neck should be straight you should not lean on the wall or keep your hands on the floor and then sit casually etc you must listen with the fullest concentration and attention by sitting straight suppose you are a handicapped person or you have a problem in your leg you cannot sit on the floor it's okay you can sit on a stool or a chair but still you must sit straight you must not sit in a relaxing position because you are listening the knowledge of almighty god vedas from that acharya the next point is uh, when uh, an acharya is standing for example acharya is traveling somewhere he is, he is traveling on a bus or he is, he is traveling somewhere where he is standing you cannot sit in front of that acharya suppose you get a place to sit also you must give the respect to your acharya that you must stand because your acharya is standing or you try to give offer that seat to that acharya this is the uh, respect towards that acharya the next point is when acharya is doing any work for example my acharya used to tell my acharya used to do all the work when he was young for example he used to do painting of his house he used to cook he used to do cutting of woods for the for samida for havan for uh, even uh, cooking purpose he cuts the wood he does all the activities he serves the cows he takes milk he used to do all the activities even construct uh, you know building when building construction of ashram was going on he used to do all those work so similarly if acharya is doing any work for example he is writing a book or he is re- referring something 
then you take permission from your acharya whether you can help him or not if he allows then try to do as much help and support as possible and in fact my acharya says that uh, beyond a certain age the acharya should be given complete rest and all the activities should be taken care by the disciples of the gurukul and that is our vedic sanatan dharma culture and the next point is uh, the next point is very very important it is also seen in uh, ramayan so do not touch others feet when you are in the guru's ashram or in his residence that means when you are in a residence an elderly person comes to meet a guruji you cannot touch his feet because at that point of time guruji is the supreme in that place so we cannot touch others feet in the guruji's presence this also comes in ramayan where when dashrath was visiting lakshman used to tell to sri ram that our father is coming let us do pranams to our father then ram used to tell to lakshman we should not do this because we are sitting in the ashram of vasishta muni here vasishta muni is our acharya we cannot touch the feet of even our father so we must not touch others feet when the guruji is there this i see in my uh, you know acharya ashram also i see many young people they used to do pranams to other elder people but we must not do this because in the ashram only the acharya is the supreme and we must always do pranams only to acharya not to anybody else in the ashram this is a very very good point and the next point is do not speak about your own pride do not speak that you know i do this like the, i do like this my gotra is like this do not speak your pride uh, about your uh, like you, you you tell to guru that i have done so much of work in my life this kind of pride talking ego talking it should not be done in front of acharya you must be humble you must always understand that he is the samadhi yogi he knows everything you must be very humble not only in front of acharya everywhere we should not talk more most about ourselves that i do this i do that i have done this i have because of this one my me only this has happened this kind of pride talking should be avoided in normal life also and in front of guru never you should do this the next point is uh, do not go and meet an other acharya who is not equal to your acharya for example your acharya is a samadhi yogi you do not need to go and meet another guru to listen knowledge from that guru who has who is not a samadhi yogi so this is the insult to acharya we must never do that okay if there is another guru who is also a samadhi yogi then you can take permission from your acharya and go to his him also to listen the vedas knowledge that is not a problem even my acharya always says if there is anybody else who is preaching you the vedas knowledge who has attained the samadhi then you can always go and listen knowledge from him but we should not go to another person who is not equivalent to our acharya this has to be very clearly understood the next point is don't talk about what you have given to your acharya as donation for example you give some money as donation to acharya 5000 10000 100 rupees whatever it is do not talk about it do not talk pride on that in temples if you have gone to temples in temples i have seen many south india temples where they will write in the light in the fan in the refrigerator that this is gifted by so and so person on so and so date this is not vedic dharma of course temple worship is not in vedas but i'm just telling for example if you give something to an acharya as a gift you must forget about it idan namam this is not mine this is not ours this is acharyas this is almighty gods that is the attitude we must always have the next point is do not ever sit in the asan of guruji an acharya's asan is to be treated with utmost respect we cannot sit in that asan even when acharya is not there you cannot sit in that asan that is the respect you should give to the acharya's asan and unless and otherwise an acharya calls you and ask uh, something to you do not go and wantonly speak to acharya you must try to maintain silence because an acharya is a samadhi yogi he is always in his silence and he is always in the bliss we must allow that uh, that you know bliss he must we must not disturb that acharya we must be silent if he calls us then it's okay we can go and talk humbly and then come back and then uh, the next point is never change your good thoughts and the good behavior uh, like you know you go to an ashram you behave very nice in front of acharya but when you come back at home you are totally opposite this should not be done ever you cannot do drama in front of acharya you must try to cultivate an a habit at home also like you are behaving in front of your acharya this is a very very important and good point for our life the next point is 
if your acharya lives in the same place as you for example you are living in um, my acharya is in yol kant in himachal pradesh like if you are living in yol kant nearby ashram of acharya you must try to go to the ashram to do pranams every day morning and evening to the acharya even if you do not see the acharya it's okay you can go and do pranam to the uh, you know inside the ashram morning and evening this is the respect to the acharya if you are living in the same place if you are not living in the same place like for example i live 3000 2000 kilometers away from my acharya so whenever i get time i should go and meet my acharya whenever you get time you should go and meet your acharya listen vedas from him note the points and then try to understand and implement those points in our life when you come back that is what is giving sukh to the acharya acharya does not expect money from you he does not expect anything from you an acharya my acharya always says what is an acharya expectation is the knowledge is given by acharya that knowledge has to be in practice in your life this is what will make an acharya always happy so we must do service to acharya we must try to do daan to acharya we must try to do all his works as as we are capable for example we do not do no painting we cannot do it it's okay at least we can try to help him give him give something to him like carrying bucket of water or carrying the paint from one place to other or holding the ladder this kind of help we can do if we cannot do painting for example we must try to do as much as support to acharya as possible we must try to do sir service to him but an acharya expectation from a disciple is not money he does not expect gift from you he expects only one thing that his knowledge the vedas knowledge what he is giving to you whether you are following it or not this is what an acharya uh, expects from a disciple and lastly what is not written in the whatsapp message is two three points we must always try to eat after the acharya takes his meal we must always sleep after the acharyas sleep in the night my acharya always says that he used to sleep at 12 o'clock at uh, or 12:30 after his acharya sleeps and he my acharya used to get up at 2:30 before his acharya gets up at 2:45 so this is the discipline my acharya did in his whole life thereby you know with intense tapasya my acharya realized almighty god so we must also try to inculcate this kind of habits when we are in front of acharya we must not eat food before him we must not sleep before him etc these are very clear discipline in the vedic sanatan dharma of course following it and not following it is our own wish our acharya will not feel bad even my acharya in the ashram always tells that do not wait for me to finish my food you eat your food because my situation is different and your situation is different so this is uh, some some things are practically impossible because we might be sugar patient or bp patient we must need to take some tablets so we might some people might eat before the acharya but as per sanatan dharma this is not allowed as per almighty god this is not allowed unless the acharya gives the permission it is not allowed so these are some and also one important point from the vedas from atharveda is when acharya visits our home we must always invite the acharya to our home for yagya for coming to our home and taking rest we must always do that if the acharya comes to our home our home belongs to that acharya until the such time he is living inside that house that house belongs to that acharya everything in that house should be done as per the guidance and instructions of acharya only we cannot become the owner of the house in front of the acharya this is vedic dharma so these are some of the points which are very very important today there are very very few acharyas who is samadhist yogi but if you in case you have an acharya who is a samadhist yogi or if you do not have an acharya but you will get a samadhist yogi in future these points will definitely help you thank you so much namaste om